Hello and welcome to Sex Ed. That's S E C T S N. And this is a podcast that carefully explores and shares the history and beliefs of peripheral faiths. I'm Patrick Reynolds. And I'm Michael Albany. In this series, we're going to be telling stories about religious groups whose convictions fell, or in some cases continue to fall, well outside of what might be considered the mainstream. We'll be talking about the ways that these groups view themselves, the way they view the world, and the way the rest of the world views them. Now, before diving headlong into this topic, we thought it would be important to first provide you with a bit of an introduction and tell you about ourselves, what attracted us to the subject of sex, and get into some of the terminology we'll be using on our show. So, my name is Patrick Reynolds, and I'm from East Lansing, Michigan, and I'm currently a graduate student at Michigan State University in the Arts and Cultural Management and Museum Studies program. I have my Bachelor's of Applied Arts from Central Michigan University, where I majored in History and Broadcasting and Cinematic Arts. After graduating, I worked for Mackinac State Historic Parks as a Historic Lighthouse Interpreter, and then I did two years in the AmeriCorps VISTA program. I have, since childhood, just had a tendency to learn something new and then get excited about it and immediately want to share it with my friends, which is what led me to the broadcasting half of my academic background, and eventually to the idea of starting a podcast so I can share what I've learned with all of you. And my name is Michael Albany. I'm a PhD student at Michigan State University studying early American history, more specifically the history of Native American and Euro-American relations in the Great Lakes region. Before coming to MSU, I earned my bachelor's degree in history and English from Albion College, and then I spent two summers working as a historic interpreter for a colonial Michelin Mackinac, which is also a part of Mackinac State Historic Parks. Oddly enough, though, Patrick and I didn't actually meet until several years after we both stopped working for the state park. Then I went to Loyola University Chicago to earn my master's degree in history, uh, where I also coordinated the Jesuit Library's Provenance Project which is a digital humanities project designed to uncover more about the history of books in Loyola's library, as well as, more broadly, the history of how 19th century Jesuits operated in the American Midwest. So, as you can see, religion is something that definitely engages my scholastic curiosity. On that note, I feel it's important that, since we're going to be talking about religions, uh, we need to talk briefly about our own religious backgrounds. Our goal is to be as impartial as possible, but religions can be tricky to talk about. Uh, so I think it's only fair to our audience uh, and to our subject matter that we be completely transparent about the perspectives that we're bringing with us. So my early childhood was basically spent flip-flopping between Presbyterianism and Catholicism. My mom's a Presbyterian, so I was baptized Presbyterian, and I went to Presbyterian Sunday school until I eventually started going to the Catholic Church only a couple blocks away from my house. Uh, my grandma went there every Sunday without fail. I remember really liking the Catholic Mass, but by middle school, my parents and I started going to a Presbyterian church again. Then I finally went to a Catholic high school, which really encouraged me to take that full sacramental plunge into Catholicism, actually uh, giving my first confession and getting confirmed. Now, when I say encouraged, I don't mean that my high school tried to force a parochial agenda on me or anything like that. My choice to become a confirmed Catholic was something I just arrived at after getting a chance to learn more about the religion and many aspects of it that really appealed to me and continue to appeal to me to this day, although I haven't really been going to church in many years. I wouldn't say that's because I've lapsed in my faith, I still consider Catholicism an important part of who I am, but there are just some elements of it that I've become more critical of over the years since I've gotten a chance to become friends with a more diverse array of people. I think diversity is very important, and getting the chance to explore a diverse series of faiths was something that really attracted me to this podcast project. Um, and I was raised uh, in a non-religious home. My dad is a lapsed Catholic, and sometimes we'd go to Mass on holidays, um, but faith was never really a big part of my life growing up. I was never baptized or confirmed. Uh, and when I was an undergrad, I had a year or two where I identified as Discordian. Um, and while I've investigated a lot of different faiths, I've never belonged to any sort of religious community. Uh, I am fascinated by the powerful influence that religions can have over the ways that people view and interact with the world, and I love how well thought out and deeply complex these worldviews are once you really start looking at them. Um, I'm also very interested in the stories of religious communities that just form on the periphery of larger and more well-known religious traditions. So now that we've talked a little about our own religious backgrounds, I think it's time for us to discuss some of the terms we're going to be using as we talk about these unorthodox faiths. 
A lot of these terms can apply to the same groups and mean similar things, but there's a few that we want to define especially. So right off the bat, we should talk about the term cult. Uh, now cult is a word that we will not be able to avoid using, but it's one that we definitely need to unpack a bit. So overall, it refers to devotion and faith directed towards a particular figure or object. Uh, there would be cults within larger religions directed at, say, a saint or a local god or goddess, but relatively recently it's taken on a bit of a different meaning. These days, as you probably know, it carries a very negative connotation, and it has been used a lot to refer to groups like the Manson family or Heaven's Gate and other groups associated with that word who are pretty infamous. When the word cult is used to describe a group, it often implies that the group is small, but also carries with it the meaning of strange or sinister, or at the very least outsiders who are in some way at odds with mainstream society. Now we'll have full episodes on a lot of the specific groups who cause this negative association to come about, and who often get labeled with the modern negative word cult. But for our purposes on this podcast, we'll probably mostly be using it in the sense of a faith directed towards a particular figure or object. New religious movement is a more general term for modern faiths that occupy a place outside of the mainstream religious traditions. And this is a term that is currently in favor, and we'll be using it from time to time when we cover modern religious groups. But since this is a podcast that will largely be dealing with faiths from quite far back in the past, that won't necessarily be the most appropriate term since those groups aren't exactly new. Sects is, of course, in the title of our podcast, and this refers to any subgroup of a larger religion, which is a pretty broad term that can cover a lot of the groups we're going to be talking about. It just implies a distinct set of rules or beliefs that set the sect apart. Now, some sects are pretty well regarded by the more mainstream religion that they are a part of, and the factors that make a sect distinct are not always something that's controversial but they can often arise from disagreements on really major theological points, and the relationship between a sect and the larger tradition from which they spring can really fall anywhere from outright hostility to mutual respect, and opinions vary greatly depending on the specific sect and ultimately uh, depending on the individual opinion. Heresy is a word that is going to be tossed around probably quite a bit as we get into some of the groups from further back in history. It's generally a pretty loaded term and it can overlap with sex, but a heresy is not just a distinct religious group that forms out of a larger religious tradition. Because heresy implies whatever their distinct views are, they are directly at odds or in conflict with the more well-established beliefs. Contrary to sex, heresy is a pretty universally negative term, and groups that are accused of being heretical tend to toss that accusation of heresy right back at their accusers. It's often a mutual denunciation, and not something anyone would call themselves. And there's many cases throughout history where conflicts have sprung up around this point. Thank you so much for listening to our intro episode here. Our first full episode is going to be about uh, James Strang and the Strangites. So please join us next time for episode one, Stranger Things. This episode of Sex Ed was researched, written, produced, and presented by Michael Albaney and Patrick Reynolds, and was edited by Patrick Reynolds. Sex Ed is created under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license. It was recorded at Leader the Lab for the Education and Advancement in Digital Research at Michigan State University. The views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily represent those of Michigan State University or any of its affiliates.